played guitar since my mid-teens. All the people I've been listening to, all the old-time bluesmen and country players, wouldn't have had fancy guitars. So I thought, oh, I wonder what they used. I heard about the cigar box guitar, which seemed to be the ultimate cheap guitar. So I made one, and it sort of worked. <laughs> These things are the musical equivalent of heroin, so watch out. There's a certain nostalgia as opposed to buying something which had come out of a workshop in China. There's not much romance or authenticity to that. It's not about being uniform and all the same and everyone going, right, I've only got to do this and I can only do this. Well, actually, what, why don't you do this? Upcycling, recycling, this is stuff that people will be throwing away. I like the fact that it's democratic. You don't have to be rich. There's no more staring in the shop window. You know, you're looking at that Gibson or that Fender. Oh, I wish I could afford that. Forget it, you know. Get a stick, get a box. Shove it together, stretch three strings across. That's what I did. Yeah. No computer controlled machinery, I'm not even using a ruler. It's a great thing to be able to go away and, and potter in your shed. And it does seem to be a peculiarly male thing. I know not why, to be honest. The modern guitars, they all tend to look the same. They're all copies of classic designs. Making a regular acoustic or electric guitar is quite difficult. It took me a long time and I had all the a proper woodworking shop at my disposal. But one of these things, it really is just a stick in a box and you can make it as simple or fancy as you can. And most everybody can manage to make one. As far as I can see, if you look at any electric guitar, it's a box, it's a hollow box with a log carved to shape, some wire and a magnet. It's very sleek and it looks very nice, but at the end of it, it you know, that's what it is. It's a box with wires on. And that's all this is. And the old blues guys figured this out way at the beginning because they couldn't afford guitars. They used whatever was lying around. So, you know, go up to the big house, there'd be the empty cigar boxes and there'd be bailing wire. And there you go. These things had come from hard times from originally slavery days when people would try and make themselves something that was akin to a banjo with a few number of strings, this open tuning. Um, so people would play blues and country music. When you make a cigar box guitar, it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a Stradivarius or a Gibson. If it's rough around the edges and you make a mistake, the ultimate thing is, does it work? Can you play music on it? And really that's all that, all that matters. As I learned to make these, I actually taught other people to make it and it was fantastic seeing the delight when somebody can actually screw a, an instrument together in a day and make music and make their own music. I say it's this sort of DIY, not EMI thing, which the punk days had, had where you could make your own record. You know, well, there was that classic thing in one of the fanzines. Here's three chords. Go and make a record. I think there is a sort of... Um 
a conscious backlash nowadays against the way that everything else has been become mass manufactured and that the world is basically standardized and the individuality has been removed from everything including instruments and music and we're putting something back in now see I don't know what's in here you start looking at everything around you and thinking oh hang on a minute I could make a ukulele out of that or that could be a banjo or this could be a guitar or that could be a one stringed whatever you know it's about as low tech as you can get I mean this really is made out of a piece of wood a biscuit tin and the pickup and um, these are toothpicks used for frets The first cigar box guitars and the other things they made them out of were out of necessity because people didn't have the money or the means to get an instrument in any other way. So people were able to make music, you know, make music out of nothing. People with nothing were making music out of nothing. People are rediscovering that feeling that music is, is that you don't have to buy it. You can manufacture it. It comes out of you and you can make it out of anything. You gonna mug me? I might gotta mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the decent marathon. Thank you very much. Download Veely now. Thank you all for coming here. Uh, I'm John. This is what we're going to be making: a three-string guitar, because the archetypal African instrument is a banjo. I know a lot of people think, oh, it's that country country music thing, you know, the one with the peg halfway down the neck but it, that really originated in Africa. And the key thing about the banjo is that tuning, it's tuned in an open chord like this is. This is tuned so that you can just strum it and you've already got a, you need to do very little. To start getting some sort of tune, we'll get on and we'll make one of these. And over in the corner is my daughter. She'll be assisting us. She'll actually know more about this than I do because she does all the hard work. Okie doke, that's enough of that. A bit of brute force. If all else fails, you can hit it with a hammer. straight on the line. Just let the saw do the work. Okay, you've paid for all the saw, use it all. Acid test. Yeah, here we go. soldering iron and feed the wire in so you get a nice big block. Anne will probably be doing most of this because she does most of what's soldering in our workshop. Super. 
congratulations to you for making your own musical instrument. Give yourself a round of applause. As a 15 year old I left school and I started as a minor. I went to Woolly Colliery at Barnsley. It's a close knit community, everybody looks after everybody else and when there's any trouble they help each other out, it's just, just the way it is. I would have liked to have been a joiner. I would have done that before all else but that didn't happen. It's it just you go where you have to go, don't you? You go where money is, and being dark pit, it's where money was. But then they shut everything, and then I became a bus driver. I would have never thought that I would make an instrument. If you could have taken me at 15 and said what I, what I make and people that I meet now, I'd, I'd just laugh at you. I'd say you're just making that up. That can't happen. I started making cigar box guitars in my cellar, but due to me making too much sawdust, my wife kicked me out. So I had to do it all in garage. So what I did, I made a made a shed inside my garage, just exactly the same as what I got down the cellar, and that's where all magic happens. My first one that I got, I bought from Chicken Bone John, and uh, and that gave me incentive to have a look at start making them. I, I didn't even know that there were a, a group of people out there that did make them. I, I thought it was something original till I, till I realised there's a lot of other people making them. I can see it in my head, I see it box and I think what what can I do different with that box because I like them all to be different. I don't want to churn them out one after another that they're all the same. It's got to be a different colour neck or a different colour fretboard or a different style box. I mean, that's a, a mandolin. That's, uh, there's still a lot more to do on that than, uh, than meets the eye. That one and that one, that's a fiddle, believe it or not. But that and that are both out of some boards, floorboards from a church. What uh, somebody gave me, I didn't pinch them. Every time I met one, even when I met one now, I can find fault with it and I'll think, I can change something on that, I can do something a little bit different and make it a little bit better. That's been waiting to be finished for about four or five years now. That, that's some old work top, just reshaped. And inside, there's space for a, a whiskey bottle. Would you call it an addiction? I don't know. It can be. It can be addictive. It's going to be really nice, that, in my spare time. I'm in my man cave and that's, that's what gives me most of my pleasure. That's my hobby. It, people have hobbies fishing. That's my hobby, making dust. Doing it, I would say it's nearly every night at week. And, and you just lose track of time because you lock yourself in there and you don't know what time it is. You just carry on and then when you, when you look at your watch, it two o'clock in the morning, I better go, better get back in. I've got, I've got to get up for work in the morning. When I make them and put strings on, it sounds like a box with strings on it and that's it. But when you get to a proper musician and then play a proper song, then you think, wow, I, I can't believe I made that. That's when I know that it's right. If somebody plays it and plays a good song on it, then I'm happy.
for the last seven or eight years now, I've been making musical instruments, stringed instruments from recycled materials. Everything has to be recycled or reclaimed. People give me tins, save me tins. Car boot sales, house clearances. I'm known as a tin man at the local car boot sale. Smell of tin. You could go to a music shop and buy a banjo or a guitar off the shelf and it would look like the next one. It wouldn't look like this though. This is just totally original. I mean, it's a gorgeous tin. 1950s, I would say. It's probably had toffees in it and it's had biscuits in it, it's probably had buttons in it, it's probably had screws in it. It's probably passed through at least two generations of, of people. Um, and now it's a banjo. I couldn't make this again if I wanted to. Um, I could find another tin similar, but it wouldn't be identical. It wouldn't have that wear on it. It wouldn't have that sort of just, just soul to it. So I'm in the shed seven days a week, you know, all day. Um, can be quite isolating. I've got dogs for company. But then I do take my instruments on the road. I go to lots of festivals, Glastonbury and Latitude. And that's where the real joy is, when I meet lots of people and the whole community of players and makers, and it's just great fun. what I play punk blues. The blues are the roots of the tree. Everything grows from that. And when I came up, it was punk. The energy and the anger was like, you know, when you're 15, I don't know about you, but I was, you know, I probably still am. <laughs> I need to get money back off the shrinks. When I started writing my own songs, I just wrote it and that's how it came out. Full on and like, fast blues or punk blues if you like and that ties in with uh, this whole scene doing it yourself it's not about throwing a load of money at something that's not where it's at and that's not where it's at that's not where you'll find the magic oh, nice. my wife will kill me <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to box stock at the slade rooms in wolverhampton named after Slade. <laughs> so come on, feel the noise or whatever. You never know how they're going to sound. Well, you spend, I don't know, you, you spent, what, four months making yours? More than yeah, that. Yeah, Grace spent <laughs> four or five months making those. Mine take about a week, <coughs> I reckon. 
and then you string them up and you don't know that whole time you just have no idea what they're going to sound like and you string them up and you hit the first chord and you get this sound which is unlike any other guitar you've ever played or anything like that and I don't know, it's quite magical really it's magical to make your to make something and then play it and it makes this sound which is just different Star shaking there. Yeah. So what I did, I filled it with brass powder and car radiator filler. But I like it for the um, acoustics. Yeah. What's this? The pickup core. Yeah. Anybody else for a guitar? Anybody else want a guitar to learn how to play? I don't worry, I've got enough. Don't be shy. The internet has allowed this to happen. Otherwise it would be just existing in some dusty little corner of a pub back room somewhere. When it started out, it was a, a guy called Shane Spiel in America. He called himself the king of cigar box guitars. Yeah. And he was being ironic, but he kind of is. Now, if you Google cigar box guitars, pfft. Without the modern technology, we wouldn't be able to do it. So it's a kind of strange, almost dichotomous relationship that we've got really between going back to low-tech musical instrument making but using the latest in high-tech social media technology to actually grow and keep the movement rolling. There's community out there and I think people actually do treat one another as real friends. The idea that somebody in Pennsylvania who in all likelihood I'm never going to meet in person would send me that and ship me that over is it's touching isn't it some people are quite um they like to be true to the cigar box roots and they call it a stick in a box the way we can look at it is those people made those instruments because that was all they had that was all they could make them out of they had a stick if they were lucky they had a box and if they were lucky they had something to make a string with Whereas for us, we, I mean, we can go to the music shop and buy strings. I'm sure if they could have done that, they would have done that. And the same with like the tools that we have to make them, the woods that we have to use to make them. And so we use, we sort of embrace what we have, really. nothing against however people want to make a, a guitar, you know, however you choose to make your guitar, whatever you've got to make it with. Playing to something from days gone by is a bit ridiculous really because you can't own the history. You don't own the history, the only thing you own is what you bring to it. you're playing a three-string guitar, you've got the challenge of getting out of that what other people can get out of a, a six-string instrument. So you come up with riffs and ideas and things that you would never find on playing an ordinary guitar in standard tuning.
They're all unique. They all have a very unique sound, which, which I love, you know. And the fact that they work is a miracle, I think. <laughs> There's an emotional attachment there. There's, this, for me, is still the bits and pieces that I found to put it together. And then when I play the music and the sound comes out, it's like, that's part of me. That's what you feel. It, it really is an extension of yourself. If I can do it, you can do it. I'll make my own instrument. I'll do what I want. It might be a piece of rubbish, but it's my rubbish. No need a Gibson. No Fender too. Just a stick in a box. Three chords and the truth. The song uh, Three Chords and the Truth, it was just a gentle Mickey take and, you know, a little poke at, at musicians who think it's all about throwing money at it. Well, I'll write my own song. Maybe you should too. There's only one thing you need. You know, you're getting into something like jogging, you know. Oh, well, I must go out and get the £130 pair of Nikes. Do you know what I think you should do? I think you should open the door and start running. Three cards in the tree. I'll get people and they'll ask me, oh, what's the exact measurement of this? That's not what's making the sound. You know what I mean? It's in here. You can't throw money at that. It, it, it's in you.